Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out and share some of the warning dreams I've been given uh, since July 14th and then another one July 17th and then another one yesterday. And I'm gonna share these in the order I received them uh, and just go over what I believe the, the Father is showing us through these dreams, the condition of the church and then what we're up against and how where we're at right now is dangerous for us because uh, we are up against some pretty heavy duty demonic uh, entities, spirits that are uh, coming against us. So in the dream I was given on July 14th, in this dream, uh, I had just gotten married and I believe the man was symbolic of Jesus. And we were like on a sky ride on our way to our new home all right we and we get to this home and it's this great big uh like a mansion it's all white every the furniture is just beautiful but we're only renting it okay so i believe this house is symbolic of uh god's people the church and so when i went into the house i see all of this uh these tools and the, these materials like there's some type of uh renovation going on and I said to the person next to me I don't know who it was I said well it looks like there's some type of renovation going on in this home where that I was uh, going to be living in and so as I walked to the back of the house into the back bedroom where I had this king-size bed I see this woman and her name is Roberta she's a Christian her husband uh, preaches at some different churches but uh, she is the landlord of the place I'm living and she uh, had hired two men who were in that bedroom and they were installing two huge uh, arcade games, all right, pay to play games. And she's just laying on my bed, like, like, it, like she owns the place and invaded my home, put in these games that I didn't want there. And I looked at her and I said, I am never going to use these. And she was like, well, that's okay. And she, she wanted them there, right? And so I was not happy about this. And so what I believe that dream is showing us is the condition of the church. And I remember thinking, how many times is she going to come into my home to check these games and see if there's money in them? Okay, they were pay to play arcade games, uh, which speaks to another element of the body of Christ, uh, that there is just a lot of focus on money and, and making money and bringing money in, uh, even to the point where entertainment is being substituted for that intimacy with the Lord, when people should be, be being drawn to the Lord, uh, turned to Jesus, and instead they're being led to uh, this entertainment. Money has become an idol within the church, within the overall church, all right? When I say the church, I'm, I'm talking about the apostate overall church, not individual fellowships, but overall, okay? The condition of the church is not good. And these these games that uh, were placed in, in the bedroom are symbolic of, of a, just a distraction. The, the money, the games, the entertainment, all of this is a distraction to the body of Christ intended to pull her out of intimacy with the Lord Jesus just and into uh, just a more generic uh, entertainment-based experience. This is very serious because right now it is so critical that we are hearing from the Lord. And like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, things are getting more and more dangerous for people but especially for the church because we are a target. The enemy does not want us here. And so we have to be alert. We have to be hearing from the Lord, we ha which means we have to be in that close, intimate relationship with him. And if we are being distracted from that by things going on around us in the body of Christ, uh, then it, it can be dangerous. We can be getting into a place where we're not able to hear from the Lord and we may uh, end up stumbling into a trap of the enemy. But, so this is the dream I was given on July 17th. I had been listening to Mike from around the world talk about the Leviathan kingdom, and I had learned about the spirit of Leviathan uh, 
years ago and, and how that spirit operates. I believe it is an entity uh, that is in the second heavens and that it has agents on earth and it's all about deception. And the way this type of deception works with the spirit of Leviathan is uh, a, a person could say to, to somebody who has that spirit of Leviathan, I love you. And that person hears, I hate you. I mean, it's just like that. It just turns everything backwards, twists it around and people end up in a place of complete deception. And so in this dream, all right, I got a message on my phone and I didn't know what it said. It was like in a strange language. So I researched it and I discovered that what the message said was, we are watching you from the heavens. We are watching you from the heavens. And I knew that this was some type of evil entity message. And so in the next, the next part of the dream, I remember I was on a path and at the end of the path, a vehicle pulls in, all right? And I see inside the driver's seat and there is some type of reptilian being that is driving this vehicle. It's like an agent, you know, like you would see in dark clothes. And it was watching me. It was watching me. And so then it like turned into some type of an alligator and so it starts running toward me while well, I start running toward it and I'm rebuking it in Jesus name. I'm binding it, commanding it to leave. And it begins then to turn around and run from me. All right. And so I am pursuing this thing. And as I am, it is shape shifting into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as it's running from me. Okay. So that sounds pretty self-explanatory, right? This spirit of Leviathan has agents on the earth and it may very well be these reptilian hybrid beings I don't know but that's what was watching me that's what was and another thing was uh, my sister came to me in the dream too and she had been given the same message now my sister Michelle typically re represents the church I believe she represents the church in this dream and she was asking me what this message meant and I told her they want you to know they're watching you okay church they want us to know they're watching us. These hybrid beings, they don't want us here. They want the rapture to happen because they want us out of their way so that they can do what they want. And I've had a couple dreams over the past, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And in both dreams, uh, there was a human being that, who was very upset that we were still here. The church, they were upset the church was here. They wanted us out of here. And I remember in those dreams, I got angry and I said, you better be glad we are here because that means you still have a chance to come to Jesus. And I'm telling you, church, the world had better be glad that we are here because the fact that we're here means there's still time for people to come to the Lord. There's still time before uh, this, this very, very terrible time of Jacob's trouble is going to be unfolding. And this is going to be the wrath of God. This is, we have seen nothing yet. Okay. What we're seeing right now, the, the birthing pains, the, uh, just uh, some corrections that the Lord is doing in the world. Uh, we have not seen his wrath. We have not seen that. So we are here right now and we have to take this serious that we have a call church. We have a commissioning by the Lord Jesus himself to go make disciples of all nations. I was meeting with my friend Vera yesterday and we were just talking about this going and making disciples versus just leading people to the Lord. And some churches are good at leading people to the Lord, but not making disciples, not helping them get trained, grounded, rooted in, in the word of God. And we have to, this has to change. This has to be turned around. We have to stop playing games, stop letting the enemy uh, into our fellowships with distracting arguments and distracting activities, anything that's going to draw us away from that close, uh, intimate walk with the Lord, anything that's going to draw us out of his peace, that has to be avoided at all costs. It has to be. We have to be close to the Lord. And, and we need to draw close to one another too and encourage each other in these in these dark times. We have to be there for each other the enemy knows the key to toppling the church is to divide them you divide and then you conquer that's the formula 
And so if, if he can get us uh, biting at one another and, and arguing over senseless, useless things, then he will have victory over us. So I, I just want you to take these things to the Lord in prayer and ask him for a confirmation. I, I don't know where everybody's at, spiritually speaking. We're all in different places. I hope, I pray that every one of you are, are close with the Lord in that secret place daily with him. Uh, but if the enemy has gotten you distracted, if he has gotten you to uh, go this way or that way, I encourage you to just do your best to get back into that place of peace with the Lord, seeking his presence, seeking that time with him, and that we can recharge, okay? Because this world, it's exhausting. It is. When, when you go out into the world and you're working or even just go out grocery shopping and you cross paths with people who are angry and frustrated, I mean, it can be difficult to, to keep your calm, people cutting you off in traffic and, and not even thinking anything of the very unkind, rude things that they're doing. But if, if we let ourselves get distracted, the enemy will have a foothold. So we have to just maintain our focus on Jesus. We are in a war, okay, with the adversary and his workers, but we have the upper hand, church. We have the authority in Jesus' name. All right, the Bible tells us, the apostle Peter said, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All right, that, that little alligator, it came running at me, but as soon as I ran at it and I uh, used the name of Jesus and rebuked it and commanded it to leave, it turned and ran the other way. Yes, but it's still getting bigger and bigger, but it was running from me. It's going to run from the church if we operate in our authority in Christ. And, and that's what we need to do daily walk in in our authority and send the enemy packing and forbid him to unfold his plans anywhere around us while we're here church okay please take this message to the lord in prayer ask him for confirmation and as always church it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for jesus i love you all god bless you